Talking about the new album, Keep Calm and Carry On, how do you think it's gone down so far? Because it didn't quite make uh, the top ten. Were you a bit miffed about that? How do you feel? Uh, well, weirdly, the album had like the best reviews we've ever had since the first album. Um, I don't think we were miffed about not getting the top ten. I think we knew when we, when we put the date in that it was a, a, a tough week with, I think, six of the top ten being Sony X Factor associated acts and stuff like that so we knew we were going to kind of sacrifice a chart position but it's the only time of year people buy records unfortunately you know record sales have gone a bit weird we could have gone and released it in january and got our number one record but then not so many people go shopping in january so it's one of those weird transition periods for music you just have to get your head down make the best record you can make um and for us concentrate on the live show until it kind of sorts itself out really I think the X Factor, though, it, it is <clears throat> really getting on a lot of bands' nerves as well at the minute. What's, what's your kind of angst against it, really? Well, I mean, every dog has its day, and I think there's, there's, there's room for lots of things in life. I think it's always been hard for bands, but I think, I think at the minute, I mean, you look at the top 50 videos of the top 50 records in the chart, I mean, there's very little live bands in that, you know. Um, Three years ago, it was all kids in skinny jeans playing indie music. I mean, it goes around in cycles. So you can't get too caught up about it, but at the end of the day, it does make it easier for new bands developing, and, you know, I think that's a bit scary because record companies want a, a quick fix. They want a quick buck to compete with all this type of stuff so they don't throw money into acts to develop. And So well, I think we can see it for what it is, and you have to look long-term, but I think for younger bands, I think it's very, very difficult now. You have to accept that it goes around in cycles, and I think you have to concentrate on what you do as a band really i mean if you if you concentrate you know on your song right now how you produce the sound of your band or how you produce the sound of your demos or whatever then you have to trust your gut feelings really i mean if if you try to accommodate what's fashionable then it's not really from your soul it's not really from your heart you're just trying to do something to get on that bandwagon and we've never really jumped on any bandwagon and we've always sounded like stereophonics and sometimes it's worked for us and sometimes it hasn't worked for us but at least you have a true following, you know, and you have a true sense of where you're going and what you are, you know what I mean? We never sound like anybody else except us. You either love it or you hate it, so just stick to your guns, really. There seems to be no stopping you at the minute, though, because sell-out tours, <coughs> gigs, the Isle of Wight last year was immense. The, the crowd just went mental. It's pretty much what the band does. I mean, I think we, we finish every cycle, and then soon after that we start recording an album, and as soon as that finished, we start promoting it and, and so on. And, and we always do things in between, obviously, like either putting a, a greatest hits album out or live album. But, but yeah, I think you, you have to stay in the game nowadays. I mean, there's so many bands around as well, and you have to keep relevant. And, and as long as everyone's hungry in the band, then you keep producing stuff. I suppose it brings me back to the PR trail as well, because it does seem really relentless that kind of everybody wants to know what you're doing. It must be quite difficult to, to, to grin and bear it, really, and keep on doing it. I think you just have to make it a, a, a laugh, really. I think when we bought the Decade in the Sun thing out, the greatest hits, I mean, that's the first time we'd ever put ourselves on a front cover. That's the first time we'd done, you know, all the kind of mainstream television and radio stuff. And, you know, we, we accepted the fact if we're going to put out a celebratory kind of record of 10 years of our catalogue, then you may as well do it with a smile on our face and do it, you know, properly. You know, there's no point just sticking out there and hope it ends up in the bargain bin. You may as well try and go for it, you know, so... I think by doing that, we learned a lot. We realised how much people loved our catalogue of music. We realised how people perceived us differently after we did kind of show our personalities on the telly a bit more. And I think from that point on, we just said, well, you know, I don't think it needs to be as separated from the public as maybe we did in the past, really. And you've done the same this time around with Keep Calm and Carry On right mm -hmm. there on the front cover. Very glamorous as well, very kind of... Mm -hmm. Noticed on the Twitter that all the chicks, the chicks have noticed that you're quite good-looking guys and you're getting lots of attention now. Yeah, well, it wasn't that glamorous in the day. We were up to our arse in water, but um, it was an actual real photo shoot. Uh, I think, you know, we, we, we changed record companies from V2 to Mercury and, you know, we had to work hard to get a family of people behind us because we'd been so used to having, you know, a family of 10 years of people which were kind of all fired and let go and, you know, it was quite a strange time for us to have to pull the pin, so... I think they wanted to try to convince us that that part of the band also sells as much as the music. So 
again, you try to get good photographers and good people taking pictures that you like as much as they like, and then you kind of come to a compromise in the middle. Yeah, that's why I brought Kevin along so he can yeah. doctor the pictures later on. Do <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about the album then, Keep yeah. Calm and Carry On. And the next single, <clears throat> Could You Be the One, released on February the 15th. Mm. I've noticed listening to the album, because I've listened to all of them, <laughs> that this one's a bit more a bit more personal and a bit more family orientated. Am I right in saying that it's written about, you know, maybe your, your, your partner or your, your children? I think, you know, the album, like any album, it's written over usually a period of about 10, 12 months while touring another album. So the songs on an album, they've never really got one overriding theme. I mean, they, they connect with each other and stuff like that. But I think Could You Be The One, it was kind of a... A little kind of campfire song originally and then when I did the demo of it put like a little bass line which was a bit Joy Division and then all these kind of reverb things and it turned into something quite quite beautiful sounding so we fitted the two you know the the sentiment of the lyric really so yeah I think every song is different and you have to kind of make them sound like w w what they mean you know what I mean and I think that's the beauty of songwriting you just let it come out and what it means you kind of work out later a lot of the time you know now, loads of gigs coming up over the next few weeks. Which is the main one that you're most looking forward to, Javier? A few ones, mm -hmm. actually. I think we're, we're really looking forward to do Europe. Uh, and uh, I know, like, Holland is going to be great and Paris. I mean, all those, those places are great to play. But also, I mean, we have great stuff coming in the UK. I mean, playing again on the O2 is going to be brilliant. I mean, last time we played, it was a fantastic show for us. And, uh, and now that we're going to do the Cardiff uh, Stadium as well yeah. on June, that's going to be great. So there's lots of things I'm, I'm we're actually looking forward to. I think we've been, obviously, when, every time you do an album, you, you have a long waiting time until it actually comes out. And then by the time you actually hit the, the, the arenas or, or, the, or the pops or whatever, whatever you're playing them, it's, it's a long time. So you really can't wait to, to get out on, on the stage and start playing the new songs. So when is the rest coming then at the, in this part of the year? When are you going to get time off and maybe look at writing again if you're not doing it already? <clears throat> um, well, yeah, I think that we, we are looking forward to throwing ourselves into the live thing again. I think the band's got to that point where you know, we've been rehearsing all this week and we've been going through seven albums worth of material. So there's a lot of songs to pick from and we've made a set that we're all excited about playing. Even the old songs we've chose, we haven't played for a long time, so we're doing new old songs, so to speak. <laughs> Um, and we're doing the new stuff off the record and I think we're just going to enjoy it. We realise the tour is going to take us through to like next September and along that way we're just going to try to make it as... <laughs> that was Richard. As we can, really. <laughs> You're a bit late. <laughs> Did you? Nice work. Well, um, well, thanks ever so much for talking to us and I hope it's brilliant tonight. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure the crowd will go absolutely mental as I always do and um, good luck for the rest of the year. Hope to see you at the festivals. Which one? Um, I don't know if that's been announced yet, but we, 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 we are in Britain for a full summer festivals, but which ones I can't tell you, unless I can tell you. Can I tell? Tell us one. Tell us one. Go on. I think we do. Give us an exclusive. I don't know. Oxygen? Yes. I think we do that, Island. I'll acknowledge that. Yeah? <laughs> Could you be? Of the sound